What's going on? This is Dylan, and today we're gonna walk through our chocolate factory and look at how we laid everything out and why we might have done that. So first we're gonna walk in through a very large painted mural that we did. That was kind of our advertising. We wanted to have a really pretty entrance to our factory. That's really important. And then when you enter the factory, it's also a beautiful tasting room that you'd enter first. Before you then look through all the windows, you see the factory and what's going on and the experience that we created. So come on, follow me. We have this nice ramp that comes in and you can see the entire factory. You can see them making chocolate back there. Uh, yeah, come on through. Come on. So this is our tasting room. We've got 16 foot long tasting counters on each side and then about four, three and a half feet in the middle just so we can address both sides of the tasting counter. And that was important just for refrigerator doors to be able to open, for people to be able to move comfortably. And then we also have another tasting counter over there. We attempted to do a cafe and we, we put half effort into it and so it didn't work. But this is our tasting room, it's about a thousand square feet. And then our roaster sits in the tasting room. And this is good and it's also bad because what ends up happening is it kicks a lot of dust into the air and clogs their air conditioning systems, just causing a lot of mold to grow in there and so we're constantly having to clean the ACs. So it's a beautiful piece of equipment but not necessarily the best place to put it as far as dust goes. There's just an insane amount of dust that comes off of this process over here. So roasting is one of the first things that we do. And then you want to line everything up just because you want to move as little as possible. So we get beans through a back door. We wheel them over here. We got a whole bunch of Peru right here. We got a bunch of Hawaiian beans that we just unloaded. We got some cacao from Esmeraldas in Ecuador. And we got a 23 kilo roaster at an auction, we can fit over 30 kilos of cacao in there and it works just fine. We're still getting the hang of it. There's a lot of uh, with more programming involved in this machine, but this is our roaster. It's connected to an afterburner we don't need, but it needs the afterburner in order to talk to itself electronically. We then, we then had to add a um, ducting system. So we ducked it out of the factory. We have a fan on that end, there's fans on this end and it blows all the fumes and the beautiful brownie smells that come from roasting. So now, after we roast, we have to winnow. So this is a cracking device, and it's very simple. There's rollers that roll together. We've covered this in another episode. It cracks the cacao into little pieces. What we wanna do is take that and put it directly over this vibrating conveyor here. And that's sifting out all the dust that the machine has a hard time winnowing. So it keeps our process cleaner and then we actually use the cocoa dust, we call it brewing chocolate, which is great for drinks. And so people can make a healthy hot chocolate that way. And so Jason is now running all of the cracked Esmeralda's cacao beans through the vibrating conveyor. But you can see this guy's vibrating on these isolator pads. It's really basic. It just, there's a, there's a vibrator under there, the whole thing goes back and forth and everything flows that way. And let's go take a closer look here. So this is the first sifting screens and this gets all the dust. And we're still kind of in this, what I call card cardboard manufacturing phase where we've got everything taped. And what we're gonna do is create chutes probably from sails, like old windsurfer sails or boat sails and create chutes that would go into these bins so that we can separate everything. But this is what our cacao comes in, these grain pro bags. And so it's sifting in two different sizes. So this size here are the big nibs and the big shells that came all the way off. Anything that fell through here is medium size. And so you can see, we got medium nibs and shells and big nibs and shells, and we would then winnow this separately. So that's our next step right now. We're gonna throw it in the, the top of the winnower here. This hopper here gets fed, there's a little, looks like a water wheel that's constantly going at a slow pace, feeding everything constantly through this chute and entering this long neck. There's a fan here, and this is like a bouncy castle fan. It's blowing the air all the way up and into that yellow bin. Whatever enters the middle here, if it's light, it's coming up and going into that yellow bin, and if it's heavy, it goes down. Uh, and then, after we winnow, we have to pre-refine. So this is our pre-refiner. 
And every time we use it, you can see how much dust is just everywhere from this process. We have to wipe it down, and then we would run all the nibs through here. You can see the stone wheels. It's like big steamrollers. It goes through here and it crushes the nibs into a paste. And we do two passes, and it's this beautiful conveyor belt of like ribbons and curtains of chocolate. It smells amazing. We capture that, and then we go in through our castle doors here. And we made these eight feet wide, so it's four feet foot door, four foot door, and I don't remember how tall that is, but now we can get big machines in and out if we have to. We've got hair nets that we put right on the inside of just about every door, just so it's really easy. But you can see everything was in line. And the last thing you want to do is have your roaster here and your winnower on the other side of the factory. Because all these little movements add up big time. You want everything as close to being uh, next to each other as possible so you can eventually automate it. And if you automate it, everything's actually tied into itself. So now we come in here and we load a ball mill. So we got clipboards hanging from the, the ball mills. And you can see here, oh, looks like somebody started to dump some chocolate back in there. But there's all the clean balls. This is because we went from a, like a, a coconut milk batch and we want to do just a regular milk batch. So we flushed it out with cocoa butter really well. And we've done a ball mill episode, but there's a pump at the bottom. Everything works its way through the balls and the cocoa mass from the four roll refiner turns into cocoa liquor because it's hot. There's a water jacket. It's getting a lot of friction is, uh, is generating heat from all the balls rubbing them together as the shaft spins. It gets pumped up, dropped back on top, and goes through again and again. And so this is where we then add sugar. This is where we then add milk powder if we do a milk chocolate. This is our milk chocolate ball mill. And then that's our dark chocolate ball mill. We started with these stone grinders over here, maybe in 2013. And before that, we used the really small stone grinders. But right now, we've got a white chocolate batch going. We've got a holding tank that we fixed up. This is a really nice addition that we figured out years ago. This is a honey tank. And go ahead and look inside there. We drop blocks of cocoa butter in there, and then we walk away and come back in a few hours and they're melted. And so we'll put two blocks, maybe three blocks fit in this guy, and then we open a valve that's right over, whoop, right over the scale, and we can weigh out exactly how much cocoa butter we need in order to add to the different ball mills or stone melangers. And so we keep raw materials here. We're almost out of sugar. We're almost out of milk powder. All of that comes from the mainland, and this is something that's really difficult in Hawaii. We have really long lead time, so we have to order sometimes two months in advance in order to make sure we have the inventory on hand when we need it. And it's just constantly uh, an issue we deal with. So another thing we did, you can see the floor here. We taped it off, and then as we were rolling out the epoxy on the floor, we threw sand. So I went down to the beach, sifted a whole bunch of sand to make it clean, and then I ended up uh, being able to add some, some texture so that we wouldn't slip. We got sinks that we put around. And in order to not dig up the concrete as much, we, uh, we didn't want to add drain lines everywhere. So we have it going into a sump pump that we're going to see on the other side here. Another thing we had to do is this room's really hot. It kicks off so much heat. So we have a vent, a ducting that goes up there where the conch and the ball mills that are blowing off the acetic acid from the refining process would get ducted out and connect to that same ducting that the roaster is connected to. And so all of that is blowing out and it just always smells amazing out there. So this is the grinding refining room. We got our conch here and then we would wheel a big tank in here, fill up from either the conch for the dark chocolate or the milk chocolate, which we don't have another conch for, so we don't conch that. But that would then fill up about 120 kilos into a Savage holding tank. It's a big holding tank. And then we come back here. This is room is kind of loud, but it's much cooler. Come on in. So here is where we're actually molding chocolate. We've got the Savage holding tank. About 200 kilos fits in there. We would then, we're using our smallest every machine here. And we're molding Hawaiian dark chocolate. And then over here, We're doing Hawaiian sea salt. And so after we would mold, what happens is they're warmed up in here. We have a dehumidifier blowing into this 
cover for our bakery car, the speed rack. You click the foot pedal. It dispenses the perfect amount of chocolate, so 20 grams, 20 grams, 20 grams, all through there. We then run it down the highway to the line. And now you can see it all fills out. We will then stop it. I messed mine up. We then take these and put them on the perforated trays. These perforated trays then get collected here. We want to collect maybe eight of them before we go into our refrigerator. And this is currently our bottleneck. So you can see we put bakery carts inside these refrigerators. We slide the perforated bakery sheets inside the fridge and then we space them apart to make sure the air can flow through so you don't end up with latent heat issues. And so we set a timer. You can see this one's got almost 18 minutes left. We don't have the fridge on any special temperature. It actually warms up when you're putting hot, the, the chocolate's not cold. So you're putting warm chocolate in there and you're opening the door and closing the door a few times. So it actually is around 55 degrees right now, which is perfect. But you can see the other refrigerators here. These are all getting ready. If you leave these in here too long, they will collect moisture. Whether it's plain chocolate or in our case, Hawaiian sea salt, which we gotta be way more careful about. And this is our current bottleneck, is the refrigeration. So one of the things we're looking for in the future is a cooling tunnel. So right now we're taking the bars out. And you can see these are all the 20 gram bars. We're putting them on now bakery parts that aren't perforated. And we'll put, there's 10 bars each time. So we'll fill these up and get a couple hundred on a, ray, a, a, a tray. Usually we have another bakery cart we slide them on so that we can later flow wrap them. So this is the flow wrapper. We flow wrap them, it goes through the rest of the metal detector, we collect them, and then we go into our very last room where we store them. Ah, okay, so now what they're doing is because it's hot out there and there's so many uh, people and machines, we're bringing the bars after they've popped out and we've trade them and here they are. And so this will go through the flow wrapper in about 30 minutes. We're almost done for the day, but you can see 20 gram bars. We've got 50 gram bars. So this is the Hawaiian dark chocolate we were just molding. This is the Hawaiian sea salt, which is a, a blend as far as the base chocolates go. And this is where we'd keep all our finished inventory. So we'd package the bars in here. We've got a big split system AC, and then we insulated the room. We built two by six walls, so they're extra thick because our hottest room is right on the other side of this wall. Laid the insulation in there, rolled out this. This is all just from the hardware store. We put that on the walls and ceilings, and that's the entire factory. So that's what we look like now. And hopefully we keep growing uh, as fast as possible because it gets easier and easier as we get bigger. One of the next two pieces of equipment we want um, between this year and the next year to space it out is an automated molding line where you have a cooling tunnel because right now our bottleneck is that refrigeration section. We have three refrigerators. It's not good enough. We are constantly having problems. It kicks off a lot more heat in the room. And then we want a machine that actually packages this. And so this is something we do by hand. If you're doing 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 of these a month, it starts to really get tedious. And so there are machines that'll do it. It's called a Kartner, and that's our next step. So that's our chocolate factory right now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.